Dirty Work is a 1998 American comedy film starring Norm MacDonald, Artie Lang, Jack Warden, Trailer Howard, Don Rickles, Christopher McDonald, and Chevy Chase. Is, is that your Norm MacDonald? <laughs> Welcome back to the Cult of Films. Uh, I'm John, the host, and Jason, you... I don't like Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, you got your revenge. Didn't you? Funny story. That, he stayed that at was Bob your Norm Dylan's McDonald? house. Yeah, he, he slept over at Bob Dylan's house for, for two nights. Can you imagine that? Them both having a conversation. Hey, <laughs> hey. you mind if I crash on your couch? Yeah, it's fine if you crash on my couch. <laughs> Let's go watch the Has TV. anyone mentioned that we sound identical? <laughs> no, no one has, because we don't. <laughs> You, you just basically gave me a compliment on my Norm MacDonald because you said it sound they sound identical, and you said I sound like Bob Dylan. You know. So, yep. By the transitive property. Yes. Got there. A sounds identical to B, and B sounded like C, therefore. <laughs> therefore, A sounds identical to C. You did it, John. I did it. Jason, you're back. It's it's you're on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, this is my Bob Dylan impression. Yeah, it's like you really like doing the podcast. No, I wish we were talking about dirty work under better circumstances. Yes. I wanted to do this years ago when Norm Macdonald was alive, but yeah, in a cruel twist of fate, Artie Lang outlives another cast member. <laughs> That's a joke only Norm MacDonald would appreciate. If you had told me that Artie Lang was going to outlive Jack Warden, Don Rickles, <laughs> Norm MacDonald, I'd be like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> this is my Bob Dylan. Yeah, Once upon a time, there was a hurricane. <laughs> that's not how that song goes. I was uh, I'm doing a doing a bit. To be Can we just talk about <laughs> Norm MacDonald's appearances on Roasts and not talk about this movie? Right, because right. Yeah. We've we been... killed Chris Farley. This was Chris Farley's last film appearance. Oh. You bastard! This was a post-mortem Chris Farley jam. Uh, but to be fair to you, sir, you have been asking to do this th movie for the longest time. I was, and you waited. I waited. I was literally writing notes, and I, and I text you a very untasteful Norm MacDonald-esque type joke, and you're like, bah. He, he's dead. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, that was how you found out. You're like, I think I'm ready to finally do dirty work on the cast. And I was like, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> like the day of. I'm going to stuff you in my trunk like a dead whore. <laughs> I've never seen so many dead hookers in all my life. Lord knows I have. <laughs> have Shooter McGavin find me? It wasn't Shooter McGavin. It was um, uh, uh, David Keckner. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. These vehicles are fully loaded. Uh, I could just quote this movie. So fucking cast. Yeah. We are doing we are doing this movie because it is it's it's a quotable movie that nobody quotes because like no one get I still quote this movie at people. It's like a better off dead, right? Like everything. Two dollars. Cash. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a uh, yeah. So <laughs> Um, what Dirty Work is, uh, it's a brilliant comedy. It was Bob Saget's first movie that he directed. Norm MacDonald wrote this, not intending to play the lead character and ended up doing it, loosely based on a Roald Dahl, Dahl <laughs> short story called uh, Revenge is Mine Incorporated. Um, just perfect. These two guys, played by Norm MacDonald and Artie Lang, used to prank people when they were kids and now they're adults and they're kind of losers. They don't take shit. And they realize that what they are good at doing is pranking people for revenge. So instead of like getting revenge for their own uh, means, they decide to turn it into a business to raise money for Artie's father who needs a heart transplant. A doctor with gambling debts played by Chevy Chase oh, offers God. to give them a new heart <laughs> Uh, if they can raise a ton of money, so they do it by getting revenge for people. So they turn their ability to get revenge into a profitable business, and uh, they go up against Shooter McGavin. It's it's a very funny movie. It could have been better if it had remained rated R, right. the way it was written. We might get into that later, because the studio was like, we can't have an R-rated comedy, and the exact same year, Something About Mary came out. Right, right. Which was dirtier 
mm-hmm. than this movie intended to be. For sure. And proved to every studio that like you can make an R-rated comedy, and now every comedy is R-rated. And, and Saget wanted to really have this be his coming out party, right? Because... Yeah, because no one knows how dirty Bob Saget is. Like, if you were a stand-up nerd, you knew that his his stand-up is filthy. Mm-hmm. His stuff on the roast filthy. Like Bob Saget is a really dirty comic. And the only like mainstream that he exposure he got uh, debuting that side of him was in Half Baked, right? Where he yeah he does the famous stand up. I suck dick for you know crack or whatever. Suck dick for weed. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Marijuana is not a drug. I used to suck dick for coke. I seen him. So this was supposed to be like his emancipation from America's from Full House. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I, I think you've said this before where you're like, comedy doesn't have to be R to be funny, right? Like, PG-13 comedy from the 90s are, are 90% more funny than the rated R shit that came out in the 2000s. Also, this movie would have benefited from being rated R for sure. Like, you can't compare this to Galaxy Quest. Though, though, if you If a movie's written to be PG-13, it can be funny. This wasn't written to be PG-13 and should not have been. Mm-hmm. And how much dirtier is Half-Baked than this movie? They just say F words and you get one boob, right? They tone down the dialogue a little bit. So the, the some of the dialogue in this movie is clearly dubbed. Um, they they paired it back to a PG-13 uh, because because everyone who works at a fucking movie studio has an MBA. They're not comedians. They're not artists. They are people that went to business school and they get to decide what art is. And it's fucked. And it's why the industry is terrible. You know, you look back on it now and it, it has a really low, like 17% on Rotten Tomatoes, but but audience score is like through the roof. I actually yeah. I think it's like 68%, but that's still like a good audience score and a, and a big disparity between the two. I saw Freddy got fingered three times in the theater. <laughs> okay. I'm sexy. I'm a sexy boy. That's where the bar is for me. <laughs> I, I don't care if a movie is deeply, deeply stupid. Oh, my God. If I was f- like 16 years old when it came out, like this was all over Cinemax when I was like 15. So it was it was the perfect time for me, yeah. you know? Yeah. And Norm Macdonald never wanted to be an actor. He, he just wanted to do stand up. He was he was writing for SNL. Uh, but I think he had just kind of gotten this gotten was, fired right when he got fired. Right. right. He got fired in like 97. OK. For shitting on OJ incessantly. Was Fair. Friends with OJ. OJ Simpson murdered two people and got away with it. So that's why he shit on OJ a lot. Because uh, because he's a murderer and um, (laughs) you can't say that on SNL, apparently. Yes, not Uh, not not when the not when the boss man is is friends with with OJ because they uh, they love murderers. (laughs) In his book, OJ Simpson says that he would have taken a bullet or stood in front of a train for Nicole. Man, I'm going to tell you that is some bad luck when the one guy who would have died for you kills you. That's probably. (laughs) mean to get on a like a a rant about how this could should have been rated r when i've seen so many shitty rated r comedies a lot of rated r comedies are written as pg-13 and then they like make them r do the but it's like how do we punch this up to make like yeah did we're the millers need to be r stuff like that Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. like talladega nights could have been you know some movies don't need to be r this probably would have benefited it's still fine this is very funny but that just goes to show you how great he was not an actor not yeah. not even playing you know by the rules this is and, and you know this is this is going to turn into a little bit different of a show than it would have if we did it a month or two ago it shouldn't we shouldn't talk about norm we're not here to we're not here to eulogize norm mcdonald we're here to talk about a movie that he made okay that was very funny and while he wrote it and he did a lot of the performances. If we could do this movie review and not mention Norm at all, uh, turns out Artie Lang was great. Chevy Chase was great. Jack Warden was great. Don Rickles was great. Christopher McDonald. And Artie, you know, like yeah. Christopher McDonald was great. Trailer Howard was in this movie. No, she's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you look at her face in this movie, you're like, who the fuck is that? If you watched Monk, she was Monk's assistant after the other uh, actress quit mm-hmm. or got fired i don't know 
she she was Natalie on uh, on Monk for like five seasons. So like when I rewatched this, I was like, where do I know her from? And I brought up IMDb and I was like, oh, just those two things, basically. Um, but she was fine in this. Uh, she did very good as the part of Mildred. Oh, hi, Mitch. Hi, Mildred. I guess you forgot my name. It's not Mildred. It's Kathy. Oh, no, I didn't forget. You never told me, so I just guessed. I read online that someone yelled, hey, Mildred, at, at uh, Norm MacDonald. <laughs> And he just like kind of acknowledged them and then like snickered and then walked away, which is yeah, that's what you want. Yeah, you want to you want to tell Lord McDonald he did something I liked, but not bother him. Right, because of how toned down it was, it gets lost in the mix of that uh, SNL Happy Madison raunch light kind of comedy. Yeah, especially because yeah. you had all the cameos. You had Sandler in here for a second. We eat the pig and then together we burn. You had Chris Farley. Um, yeah, and Shooter McGavin. <laughs> and Shooter McGavin playing Shooter McGavin just with yeah. a different name. He's such a good comedic foil. I really love how Christopher McDonald has really steered into, like, I have resting Fred Trump face. And he's sort of like, <laughs> I look like I'm here to close an orphanage and I'm cool with that because he's so funny. Yeah, very underrated comedian. He, he's even funny in, like, a movie that's not supposed to be funny in Requiem. Like, him just being there is kind of yeah. a joke and kind of a, a breath of levity, even though he plays kind of a menacing role. Underrated role I, player. I, like, he's properly rated. I think everybody appreciates Christopher McDonald. <laughs> I think everyone's underrated. You know this. This is an ongoing segment. You say that a lot. Anytime you like something, you can't just say, I like I that. You have to say it's underrated. Because <laughs> if I like it, everyone But I'm the only one who recognizes that Christopher McDonald's a genius. <laughs> that's right. So one thing I really like about this movie is like, yeah, it's a comedy, but um, I kind of like that that subgenre of people getting clever revenge and doing kind of like like grifty stuff almost. You know, mm -hmm. I, I kind of liked there was a while I watched like every grift movie I could watch. And I, I think Community kind of ruined that for me because yeah. they're very formulaic. But there was this the movie Slackers, that Devin Sawa movie mm -hmm. Slackers. That that was kind of like people pulling scams. I like that this movie kind of has that that scam element because a lot of the scams they pull for revenge are very funny mm -hmm. and clever. So it's not just kind of like, it's it's like a it's not a smart comedy. It's a stupid dick and fart joke movie. <laughs> but there's one scene where they get beat up by dudes in a bar fight and they get their revenge by calling the frat house on the phone and saying, hey, these guys are pretending to be cops. And they're robbing all the frat houses. So if cops show up, they're not real cops. Then they call the cops on the frat house. <laughs> the real cops show up to tell them to turn their noise down. And then they beat up the cops. And then they call for backup. And all the frat guys get the shit beat out of them by the police. <laughs> and that's not the most clever thing ever. But like for a PG-13 fart movie, it's, it's kind of cool that like they do some some of the, the pranks are funny. They get uh, insult comic Don Rickles to just make fun of Artie Lang and Norm Macdonald. And it like it translated into him shitting on them as actors, not as uh, <laughs> as characters. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Because I called your friend a fat pig. Huh? You think that's funny? Oh, no, I was just laughing uh, earlier when you were talking to his belly. Don't you get a horse and live in the mountains someplace. And don't bother anybody. <laughs> I would love to see just. All of the uncut footage from this. I would love oh, to see yeah. a four hour cut yeah. of just like the three hours they had Don Rickles trying to shoot two minutes of movie. <laughs> just the you riff know? track. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they do some they do some of the bloopers during the end credits, which I appreciated. Mm -hmm. But it was mostly like, oh, I, I laughed trying to deliver a line right. and not, you know, here's where Chris Farley chewed on the scenery, you know? Because, uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the actors from this movie are dead mm -hmm. now. You know, it's been it's been over 20 years since this movie came out. So, you know, of course, a lot of these uh, people are dead and uh, would be nice to kind of see some of the the stuff that didn't make it into the movie. That was just too funny for it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we, we got a fine movie and I don't want to give too much of it away um, because it's not that there are twists per se, but there are funny pranks and 
and the first time you see it is the is the best viewing for this movie. So if you still haven't seen it, uh, I don't know what was holding you back, but like, yeah, don't sleep on this. I, I have to say spoilers because I just have to to say two at least two jokes or two bits that just make this like have cemented this movie in my brain. Well, first off, like the Saigon horror thing, I didn't even remember that it was from this movie. That is such like an iconic line. And there's the Saigon whore that bit my nose off. Yeah. And maybe I, I feel like everyone's heard, you know, a Saigon whore bit my nose off. But no. Do you one, think everyone's heard that? I, th- I I really do. You think people who haven't seen Dirty Work are aware of the Saigon whore thing, and you're gonna say that, and they're gonna go, "That's what movie that's from." You really <laughs> think that? I don't know. I I, I do because I, I remember vividly just hearing that a lot, but I don't. Re- I I couldn't really like. Oh, that that person seen Dirty Work. For whatever reason, the the joke that that was cemented in my brain. There's a point at, at the beginning of the film where his girlfriend is breaking up with him because he's just, you know, a lazy guy. He's norm. Yeah. yeah. He's just norm, exactly. It's revealed by uh, him walking down his alley and, and just, like, random people wearing his articles of clothing or, like, carrying his stuff. And yeah. that, that gag goes on for a good, like, 15 minutes after the initial joke. And the part that just floors me every time is just the guy walking by out of nowhere after like 15 minutes after the joke happened. And he goes, hey, buddy, that's my shirt. And then the guy's like, oh, this one, he takes it off and he just it's has just... like a, a fur coat on. Basically, he just has so much body hair. He's like, oh, never mind. I thought it was uh, anyone but you. <laughs> <laughs> just for whatever reason is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I, I love that. Uh, but. Man, the the moth joke uh, scene of this movie, I think, is just so expertly done. Is is the thing that's in my background right now. The the fish gag with the mob is yeah. so brilliant, and it goes mm-hmm. on for so long. It is because Norm Macdonald had this thing, especially when he was more known for like going on like and, and hijacking Conan O'Brien's you know segments. Uh, for yeah. for you, he would break all the comedy rules. You're supposed to kind of get in and out, be brief, you know, be real quippy, and that's it. No, he would hijack other people, other guests' moments, and and all this thing. Never bad, never like attention seeking. He was just that good. Always, always bad, always attention seeking. Yeah, it was a shitty thing to do to other people on talk shows, but it was funny, so we don't care. Like, <laughs> you're not supposed to do any of what Norm did. It was transgressive, yeah. and that's why we loved it. Sure, sure. If you have seen this movie, cool. You enjoyed as much as we did, but like if you haven't seen this movie, see this movie because it's funny. I like the pranks. I think the the, the prank aspect of it is kind of what separates this from just other PG-13 comedies of the era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and on paper it sounds so stupid, right? Like pranks, uh, ooh. But yeah, but it's not just like pranks. It is getting revenge on people. I really like the concept of outwitting somebody mm-hmm. who screwed you over. I like that concept a lot. And they do a lot of that in this movie just to get revenge for themselves, but also to get revenge for other people for money. <laughs> and it just goes so far, too. It's like <laughs> without giving out a lot of details or anything, it, it there's just like. Yeah, they're not saying the f bomb every two seconds, but what happens, what's implied, is so much darker than if they were to just, you know, drop a bunch of f bombs and show a, a sure. set of boobs. After the comic book movie revolution, Thanos literally like snapped all these movies away, right? Like, there's no straight up comedies anymore unless you're Sandler churning them out every week on, on Netflix and they're all garbage. But well, they're not there. No one's going to theaters. It, it's it's tough. Like, how do you justify making a comedy right now? Like an R rated comedy. So R rated kind of narrows its appeal because who you want to be seeing movies, comedy movies are like 14 year old immature people who think everything's funny. Right. So an R rated movie ostensibly like limits that appeal um how do you justify releasing a comedy into theaters when it would be just as funny on a cell phone or an ipad yeah and how do you justify having to spend 30 million dollars to promote the comedy and therefore it's got to make at least 60 million the way the studios make comedies 
doesn't really set them up to, you know, to for success. So you need something like Booksmart, you know, mm. for them to be like, all right, we'll, we'll do this. It's the format matters now. Yeah. Yeah. So they're still making pretty decent. Com- like, I thought Blockers was very funny. I thought Game Night was very funny. I think even with like Farrell McKay kind of stopping what they were doing, where they were making two movies a year for like 10, 15 years, yeah. you know, and, and, and Apatow not doing everything. I think with even with that stopping, I think there are still decent comedy. But like, who wants to pay forty five million dollars to promote the movie Tag? <laughs> yeah. When like, is Tag going to make ninety million dollars? Maybe, probably not. Mm-hmm. So, it, it's tough to in the age of just like, just having Adam Sandler make movies for Netflix. It's tough to know who to give the money to. And it's not Adam Sandler because no. he only made one good movie for Netflix. And the one I liked isn't the one anybody else liked. The cobbler. I thought the do over was the only good movie oh, he made for Netflix. The so, and it, you know, David Spade's a big part of that. I think you get so much more bang for your buck doing stand up specials on Netflix. That's where Netflix is really crushing it. Yeah. Because a stand-up special doesn't cost $45 million. And you can just put up a new one every week and be like, we spent $13,000 shooting Tom Segura doing an hour. We're Netflix. How funny uh, how that's all become full circle. The comics wanted to succeed to get to the movies, but now it's the comics going back to the stand. Like, And now other people yeah. from other vocations, like Steve-O is doing stage shows now you're not not yeah. just like, he's always done stage shows but like literally stand-up comedy now because that's what's in it, it, it's funny how it just kind of eats its own tail well you don't have to know how to do stand-up comedy to be a stand-up comedian sure. anymore. especially if you have a, people, a name already right? yeah people will go see stormy daniels do stand-up for 45 minutes and they're like wow this was terrible i guess i don't like stand-up yeah and not oh i guess this person shouldn't have been given a microphone sure Sure. There's a spectacle. But that's a to that. that's a separate conversation. Are they making movies like Dirty Work now? Maybe, maybe not. But like, if you watch all the stuff they made, that's like this. If you Google movies like Dirty Work, Screwed is going to come up, and Envy is going to come up, and Eulogy is going to come up. Big trouble. And it's all shit I like. Yeah. Just that that era where they were just making. Those some were PG-13, some were R. Just those stupid ass Jack Black, you know. Shallow Hal. Yeah. Uh, the 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 Fairley Brothers type stuff, you know. I thought a lot of that was funny. I think if you like Bob Saget, and you should, he's very dirty and very funny. Uh, I think if you like Artie Lang, it looks like he got his nose bitten off by a Saigon whore, so he got the last laugh on Chris Farley there. I think if you read a description of this movie, you will know if you like if you're going to like it, right? I'm glad that people like, figured it out to go back for this movie rather than a lot of the other movies, because those Happy Gilmore's and uh, Billy Madison's and all that that came that just churned out back then. And yeah, yeah. Sandler was pretty funny back then because he was like one of the first ones in that kind of movie genre to do it. But this at least got its cult following later. It got completely shit on and forgotten about when it came out. Uh, yeah. But now people are like, oh, this one was was different. It has that, again, that, that uh, Better Off Dead kind of uh, yeah. cult following to it. So I think the other AS I would have liked to see more movies out of, um, Andy Samberg. Because he made Hot Rod, and Hot Rod was very good. I will never. That's never. It's like a that. top top twenty five all time comedy. You and Zach are gonna have to do the Hot Rod episode, and I'm without you. Fine. Out. Hot Rod is <laughs> Hot Rod's per. If you like, if you like Hot Rod, you'll love Dirty Work. There, we, <sighs> we tied it in. So the fact that Sandberg ended up on Brooklyn Nine Nine making Copaganda for ten years kind of sucks because like he would have made four good movies, but he didn't. Well, there you go. Is that where these this format went? syndicated television which is almost a, a dying breed onto itself but is that where the shit i don't know to? how many stand-ups really got sucked up into that though or how many like snl people you just you the the whole 
um, Lauren Michaels has to make the movie model kind of broke down because Lauren Michaels is like, I think people want to see Chris Kattan in movies. Hi, you guys want some cookies? And Chris Kattan made a bunch of shitty movies. And then what are they really done yeah. with SNL people? Because like Kristen Wiig just kind of did her own thing. She didn't need Lauren Michaels producing her movies, mm -hmm. you know? So like who from SNL really is making those Lorne Michaels movies. Yeah, no one. Because the I don't know if it's politically or socially, we're just different. We're more jaded. We're, everyone's hardened right now. Everyone's pissed off. And that's why Maybe. Aubrey Plaza is the the comedian style or the comedy style of choice. Kristen Wiig a little bit, but she's like a softer Aubrey Plaza. Like, right now, we want our comedy just pissed off and deadpan. I, I don't know if that's... I, I think comedy has sort of become a lot of different things because you couldn't have made BoJack Horseman in 1998. Again, it's syndicated, though. It's a, it's, I think this is where this lives now. You, you... So, but, like, somebody like Jenny Slate gets fired by SNL and ends up on Big Mouth versus... Mm -hmm. You know, well, I mean, Jenny Slate's done a ton of shit, mm -hmm. but like you, you don't need the whole like we need to make a Wayne's World movie model. I, I think this was the first kind of movie where like these people were SNL adjacent. Artie Lang was on Mad TV. Norm Macdonald was fired by <laughs> SNL. Bob Saget was never really did anything dirty, you know, uh, uh, Farley left SNL. Chevy Chase left SNL. A lot of change ups. Yeah, I kind of think this might have been the movie that could have, if it had been rated R, could have launched the whole, hey, I think people can handle the, the word fuck in a comedy. Mm -hmm. But something about Mary did it instead. And the Fairley Brothers are did some very funny movies, and then as soon as they made a bad one, they stopped. Yeah. Which was fine. Because they went on a really good run. Right. And then Kevin Smith tried to pick up the pieces and yeah, well, fucked it up. <laughs> so I think this could have been the the R-rated comedy that launched R-rated comedies. And something about Mary did it the same year instead. Um, this was fine. I think this was a movie that that said it was okay to to make an R-rated comedy. It never really got the credit it deserved because I, I think the studios meddled. It worked fine as PG-13, though. I will say that. Right. But something like Envy that was, you know, I, I'm like one of the only people who likes Envy. Um, I think you have to like Jack Black, maybe. <laughs> but I, I think something that was clearly written as PG-13, I think it still it still worked fine. And there was there was an area in the an era in the late 90s where early 2000s where people just kind of said, let's make a PG-13 movie as funny as we can. And then after that, it was sort of like, we could just make old school, though. Yeah. And people really responded to that. And I think old school is not a very well-written comedy. But I think it really appeals to douchebags. And there are a lot of douchebags. And it also, they saw that movie a lot. It also came out, it was the right movie for the right time. Sure. And I think so was something about Mary. Those are yeah. movies that came out that were like, it, in, 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 like you're saying, this could have been that if it was allowed to be. But there sure. was those comedies that came out like The Hangover and Anchorman that came, you know, yeah. all that shit that redefined what the genre was. Bridesmaids, you know, all that stuff. Uh but though, where's the genre now, though? Exactly. Because it's kind of like in this age where a comedy has to justify making twice its advertisement budget. They are making a lot of flops right now because they don't know how not to do it. They're making that fucking Camille Nanjiani taxi cab movie that nobody saw. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what that's called. Right. Well, or they're just so jamming like, the comedy into the into the Marvel movies, right? They're like, the point of all of that is they aren't making movies like Dirty Work anymore. No. And should they? 
I don't know. I don't know. But see dirty work. See dirty work. Uh, see- it was the, it was the perfect encapsulation of just the pinnacle of you know it was an SNL Mad TV Friars Club crossover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just had a lot going for it and generational I, SNL, right? Cuz you had yeah. Chevy, Chris Farley and Norm. Che- yeah, Chevy from season 1 of SNL right. and Norm from the most recent season before this came out. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And yeah. Then Chris Farley it, it probably arguably the best era, you know. So you had it was it was very much an SNL. Don't make film. me don't make me break the glass on my SNL rant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole other podcast. I think yeah. we're birthing a lot of different ideas for different podcasts during this. And your life was the best. You think SNL was the best, but honestly, it's always been exactly as good as it is now. Okay. Fair SNL enough. has always been exactly the same. That's fair. You know, not to make this a, a, a eulogy for Norm, like you said, but man, it, it, it just had that extra oomph uh, watching this around this time. And just wow, what 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 a what a difference maker! What a what a just a killer! He was just a killer comedian, so much different. And he was the guy that made the other comedians laugh, and that is yeah. saying a lot. That's what Norm's gonna go down in history well, for. Hopefully. Well, sure, playing to the back of the room doesn't always work, but he found a way to to play to the back of the room in a way that still made other people laugh because it wasn't too inside baseball. Mm -hmm. It was, he was deconstructing the tropes that made you laugh in real time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he did some of the ballsiest stuff in some of the craziest situations, like not ballsy because it was edgy, but ballsy just because it like, it wasn't edgy. Like going on a Friars Club roast and reading out of a like a 1950s joke book is very funny. (laughs) But you but only one person can do it ever. Right. If if somebody else did, it's like, bah, Norm did it. He he was the only person who ever did or ever could do that. And having the balls to do that means you go down in history. So he took a lot of risks this movie was one of them, and uh, I think it paid off. Absolutely. That is our thoughts on Dirty Work uh, from 1999. Hell of a year. Probably arguably the best year cinematically of any year. Oh, my God. Who's <laughs> arguing that? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I just had to put in a little bit you more. You always say that. Uh, the 1999 was underrated. That's the other thing you no, would no. say. <laughs> it's, it's, it's rated uh, appropriately. It is the best cinematic year of all time. So just add add another one in there. Dirty Work came out uh, 1999. But yes, uh, who, who before we go, uh, two things. First off, watch this movie w- with, a, with a caution uh, warning on it. If you don't want to do the Norm MacDonald voice, uh, don't watch this movie because this is as infectious as Fargo is. Fargo, you want to talk like your merge. Uh, for like days no, afterwards. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember. Yeah, yeah. she. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, because <laughs> you're you're, you're, your, there. your accent in the wood chipper there. <laughs> this is like that, but you're gonna be talking like you know a uh, uh, 1920s gumshoe in in you know New York. Uh, I'm on a beat. So yeah, this is my Norm McDonald boys. <laughs> You sound like the guy from the fucking B-52s, man. <laughs> it was a giant clam. <laughs> I, I assume this is one of your more beloved movies uh, that you've seen. Who would you recommend it for? Sell this to someone that's never seen Dirty Work. If you've never seen Dirty Work, you're you're looking for uh, mm-hmm. a, a comedy that's not like... It, it wasn't allowed to be gratuitous. So uh, the strength of it comes from the jokes um, there are some the, some fun insults and there's some fun gags and there are some really decent pranks. I think if you go back and watch comedies from another era, you're like, wow, that was considered not so racist at the time, but that doesn't hold up. There's nothing really like that in here. In fact, I think they kind of make fun of the whole prison rape jokes are funny trope. Yeah. 
earlier than everybody got sick of making those jokes. Ridiculous. Because I think those jokes are really lazy and hacky. And I think this movie kind of got ahead of kind of starting to, to shit on that. Like a year before Half Baked was still making them. And everybody was acting like, you know, uh, Chappelle was a genius. I, I think you can go back for this movie and I think it holds up pretty well. So if you haven't seen this and you're at all interested in any of the comedies of the era and you just like just kind of miss this, definitely go back for it. And I think you'll be like, oh, wow, I'm I'm upset that I missed this because it's better than a lot of the stuff from that era that I liked. You have to want to see a funny movie with jokes in it. And jokes are sometimes at someone's expense. So you have to be ready for that possibility. But a lot of the humor is self-deprecating. Um, it's at uh, Norm and Artie's expense. So they're white men and you're allowed to make fun of them. So we did it. We did a comedies. Uh, I, I would do something differently for this that I would do in any other show as far as recommendations go. I would recommend this movie to people that have seen it. to Because there's not a lot of like straight-up comedies that I would recommend to go back and watch. Because a comedy is kind of like a puzzle. Like Once you see it and you know the jokes, it's, it kind of loses half of the luster. This one, man. Go back for it. it watch it again, especially if it's been a, a, a long extended period of time uh, that you haven't. This I was laughing harder at this than than rewatching me myself and Irene. I, I just rewatched uh, a little bit ago. This one had me dying recently, so sure, definitely recommend this for people that have already seen it to go back and watch it again. Jason, we did it. We finally talked about Dirty Work. Where can everyone find you? I am at Jason E. Alt on Twitter, and I have a link tree there that links to all my other projects you may or may not be interested in. I am John the Host. You could follow me at John the Host. You could also follow this very podcast at The Cult of Films. You could also listen to us in podcast forums on iTunes, Spotify. Uh, leave us your your uh, your tight five. Is that the right term? Um. Y yes. <laughs> as bad as that joke bombed, that's definitely not going to be part of my tight five. Yeah, and if you like this video, go ahead and since you're here already, you watched up until this point. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button. Share this around with your friends. Tell them that we're talking about cult films. Uh, until next time, don't get your nose bitten off by a Saigon whore. That's good advice for anybody. <laughs>